I'd like to welcome everyone today in our second webinar for this year from FinDev Gateway. And today we're going to talk about financing small and medium enterprises in the Arab world, cases or examples from innovation, partnerships and expansions. Welcome everyone. First of all, concerning logistics, if you want to ask any questions, please use the chat box on the right hand side on the Zoom platform. And to make sure that the moderator has received your question, please choose everyone, the word everyone, from the list. Please keep your webcam turned off so to keep your privacy and also to keep the connection as smooth as possible and all of the microphone are, microphones are going to be muted muted throughout the webinar and the recorders the recordings are going to be sent to the participants and those who have registered after the webinar and for the first time we have simultaneous interpretation and you can listen to either Arabic or English. To do that, uh, please click on the button at the bottom of the page on the Zoom platform and click on interpretation and choose whether you want to listen to Arabic or English. And now uh, we're going to turn to our moderator, Ms. Sahar al -Tibi. Ms. Sahar, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Eddie. I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar today. Welcome to our second webinar. And we're going to speak about the micro enterprises, small enterprises and medium enterprises. I'd like to welcome the speakers here today, Mr. From and Mr. Hisham Herro from uh, the microfinance from Rocco. Well, the topics we're going to talk about today were based on meetings and the consultations that we had uh, with the specialists in the microfinance in the Arab region. The first thing that we had uh, discussed the journey of digitization, automation, and technology. All other subjects were entrepreneurship and the micro MSMEs and how they can access more numbers and serve them through their uh, fintech. Other topics that we're going to deal with next month and the other one is also to focus on uh, the integration of women and the challenges and the risks in the region and how to address them through the, uh, the institutions. Well, the topics that we're going to tackle today were part of the, the experience of the, those contributing today. We're going to focus on the innovation and uh, the partnerships of excellence and how to expand in order to, uh, to give more access to more MSMEs in uh, the uh, financial services. Among the topics also that helped us focus on the MSMEs is the current situation in the world. If you look upon the numbers, you will find out that uh, currently there's a technological development and the number of uh, the population in the whole world is increasing beyond imagination and also the number of the youth. At the same time, there's unemployment that is wreaking havoc. And the only thing that is decreasing is the ability to create more jobs for these increasing numbers and the demand. The most recent studies of the World Bank and all the, the IFC and also the ILO underscore four important facts. Nine out of 
10 employments are provided by the SMEs. The world needs more than 3 million jobs per month for developing countries. So until 2030, we, have to, we need that number to cover the growing demand. The lack of finance is the greatest challenge that the MSMEs are facing. As for the gap in finance, so studies in 2010 have defined that this decrease was 2 trillion per year. In 2017, the same study was conducted and the gap has expanded to $5.2 trillion. With this simple introduction, I can show you how is it very important to tackle this topic today in order to help more people get access to their MSMEs and also start them launch and expand their businesses so as to provide and create more job opportunities. I would like to welcome our first guest, Mr. Ulrich Hess from the GIZ, who is going to talk to us about the, pro the program, which has started this year. It is called ITEN in the Arab region. Mr. Ulrich will speak in English. So if you wish to listen to the uh, Arabic interpretation, you can just uh, press the button Arabic, just as uh, Mr. Hitz said. Ulrich, you have the floor. To everybody, I'm, I apologize for, for, for the English. Um, uh, my Arabic is uh, working work in progress, <laughs> to say the least. Um, but, um, well, in one year from now, perhaps I can say a few more words. Well, um, so much. It's such a pleasure to uh, to to speak to you all. Um, um, uh, it's Charov uh, now. I'm very happy to speak to you, in particular with uh, regard to MSMEs, financial inclusion, and why it matters, and what we do about it. Um, um, and in the region, and in particular in Jordan, of course. So um, that is sort of our starting point. We want to empower um, um, and strengthen MSMEs um, through financial inclusion uh, to ultimately generate the additional jobs and growth uh, that the region, um, and in particular this region and the world uh, so badly needs. So um, voila, that's our approach. We would like to approach the problem of solving for a market failure, really, uh, for, for um, MSME financial inclusion. I mean, meaning that there is a market that fails um, MSMEs access to financial services. <clears throat> access and use uh, of qualitative uh, financial services. So we believe that we should approach this, this uh, issue from three sides, so to speak. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, from, first of all, from the regulatory framework side, uh, there is a, um, a lot of additional barriers and, and issues uh, with regard to the regulatory and legal, as well as supervision framework, really, um, um, for, for innovative MSME finance services. When we say innovative, innovative MSME finance services, we mean non-traditional services. Um, that could be, you know, normal, uh, um, traditional, uh, non-traditional services, such as leasing, such as factoring, such as um, uh, crowdfunding, um, financial services that are particularly relevant for MSMEs and that tend to be uh, available in, in more mature markets, <coughs> and perhaps less so in, in, uh, in Jordan and in the region. So conditions, uh, regulatory super, 
and supervision framework uh, is the first angle from where we wish to approach uh, uh, this, 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 this problem. Um, then we want to work and uh, we are working on in different projects on the supply side and on the demand side. So on the supply side, we wish to capacitate to increase the capacity of, of um, Jordanian, um, in this case, uh, Jordanian financial intermediaries uh, to deliver these innovative or even more traditional MSME financial services. At the same time, we want to work on the demand side, uh, that is uh, enhance MSME's capacities to effectively tap financial services um, or use, um, access and use uh, these financial services for growth purposes, essentially, to ultimately grow their businesses. So not for consumption credit, but for uh, to grow their businesses. Um, there is um, in our project here in, in Jordan, um, a particular focus on women-led MSMEs and their access to perhaps adapted uh, and women-friendly uh, financial services. Uh, the assumption here is that um, the women-led MSMEs face particular barriers when it comes to access to finance. Um, so on the next slide, we can, um, I want to show you a little bit that uh, we work in different countries in the region. Um, so we also have uh, work in Tunisia, um, 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 as well as Egypt, in West Bank, or West Bank Gaza, uh, well, pa Palestine, and uh, as well as Jordan. Uh, actually, there is also some uh, a new project coming online in Iraq as well. So um, this approach, this holistic approach, um, working on the supply side, the demand side, as well as the regulatory framework, um, are essentially our approach in, in uh, all of these countries. So. Um, Voila. So what are we talking about uh, when we say financial inclusion? We really mean more than access. We want to um, achieve here, um, we use usually the, the G20, GPFI financial inclusion definition, where we mean that uh, financial inclusion is a state in which all working adult um, a working age adults and MSMEs as well um, have um, uh, effective access to the financial services, uh, the whole gambit of financial services provided by financial institutions, um, formal financial institutions, so that is credit, savings, payments, insurance, and investments. So effective access actually means uh, the convenient and responsible also delivery of these services. Um, we are talking about consumer protection. So more than access and use, we are also talking about the responsible um, um, delivery of these services. So that's what we mean by financial inclusion. Um, so perhaps one word about why financial inclusion is important on the next slide. Um, we, uh, we want financial inclusion um, of MSMEs and households to, first of all, to reduce transaction costs. Um, um, you know, um, it's, a, it's a simple economic equation, so to speak. We want less costly uh, access to to, uh, to financial services to ultimately um, increase wealth uh, at household level because we have less financial, we have less transaction costs. At the same time, we want to stimulate uh, the growth of SMEs. Um, so we're talking about MSMEs, access uh, to finance, use of finance for growth. And we also um, believe that the financial inclusion of all actors and the society ultimately enhances the integrity 
and stability of the whole financial sector. Um, stability also because uh, when we include um, all actors and households uh, uh, um, in, into the financial system, we have ultimately a better spread of risks, um, less concentration, and therefore ultimately stability. Um, so finally, we also believe that financial inclusion helps to promote, um, therefore, social stability um, um, and uh, resilience, actually, at the household level against uh, catastrophes. Small, sort of small catastrophes at household level, as well as uh, a large uh, natural and uh, other systemic uh, risks and catastrophes. So all that, of course, um, um, helps with uh, um, um, the achieving achievement of sustainable development goals. The next slide um, gives you a bit of an overview of um, where we, well, we are jumping a bit here. We are talking here about our national financial inclusion strategy in Jordan. Um, the, the National Financial Inclusion Strategy um, um, that some of you might be familiar with, 2017 and 2020, um, um, will be renewed. Um, the strategy that has been in place before focused very much on the gray areas here up here, um, bottom 40%, women, refugees, youth. It did not specifically focus on MSMEs um, um, as a target group that we want to include financially. Um, um, so this is what we are now proposing, what we will be working on with uh, CBJ, with the Central Bank of Jordan. Um, in addition to that, you, you are familiar probably with the, the different types of um, um, financial products here, loans, savings, et cetera, et cetera, um, money transfers uh, and MSME lending and alternative finance um, that we wish to, we think can make a difference in terms of financially including households and MSMEs. So who are the, the, the delivery um, institutions, uh, it's banks, MFIs, other non-bank financial institutions, as well as insurance. Um, so the key enablers here um, are, again, familiar territory. We are talking about digitalization, digital financial services, um, um, fintech enabled that perhaps can make a difference in particular with regard to uh, um, MSMEs. We are talking about um, an important um, pillar here also in terms of financial and consumer protection, of course, as well as financial capabilities, financial literacy um, to be enhanced uh, as to enable ultimately um, access to finance and financial inclusion. Of course, Data and research are also important um, um, elements of, of this whole uh, strategy, strategy house, um, as well as, of course, a functioning, conducive, perhaps risk-based uh, regulatory framework um, that includes laws, regulations, and instructions. Instructions is sort of the, the implementation texts for regulations. And finally, we need, and very importantly, uh, we need a, a functioning dialogue um, between the public and private sectors um, um, to, to ultimately understand each other and, and uh, um, make the system work um, as, as long, along with uh, dissemination of these pieces. Well, now we are, uh, Okay, um, on a different slide. <laughs> um, um, well, okay. Um, um, so, yes, this is this. <laughs> sorry. 
Um, this is the slide that I just described. Um, and um, I'm sorry, I, I saw the wrong slide before and therefore I jumped to the final slide. Now I go back to this slide. Um, um, let me go, allow me to quickly go back to this slide, slide number, yes, exactly. And then um, go to the next one, perhaps one more time to, to, to just make sure that we are, that we didn't lose each other here. Um, so so why, why should we consider MSMEs in the National Financial Inclusion Strategy? So um, this uh, uh, MSMEs have a strong role in, in, in financial inclusion, as well as in the economy, of course. I mean, first of all, because they control Contribute to GDP um, to a large extent. Uh, they, you know, between sixty to seventy percent is of the of the overall GDP is generated by by MSMEs. They create the jobs as well, um, usually more than fifty percent, and they also um, have a large size of. You know, they are the um, um, the large size, share of the of the um, of the of the businesses, of course. So um, essentially, we believe there is a large finance gap. Um, of course, there is the um, research and studies are not on this. Globally, five trillion um, large finance gap is especially in, in, uh, in the MENA region. So by strengthening and empowering MSMEs, um, um, we ultimately um, enhance economic growth and employment. So with that, um, I'm wondering if we um, would therefore, um, 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 if we have covered if we have covered the previous slide with a strategy house, um, with this one um, properly, I think uh, what is important here is that we wish, we believe that we now in our financial inclusion work in the region, we need to focus particularly on also on the MSMEs, not only households, so the more traditional perspective on financial inclusion, but also MSMEs, um, because they are excluded to a large extent. Um, and this is where we need to focus them on as a target group. We need to additionally, we add uh, additional types of financial services. And um, voila, we also believe that uh, fintechs have a specific role to play as enablers. Well, uh, with that, I want to conclude and uh, hand over to um, Walid, uh, my colleague in Eifin. Uh, over to you, Walid. Thank you. Thank you, Ulrich. Uh, mm -hmm. Before Walid joins us, um, I just want to thank you again for your uh, introduction and overview. And um, in case nobody asks this question, I want you to think about my question to you uh, towards the end about, uh, because you put one of the elements is also impact, so ensure there's impact. And I'm going to yeah. ask you, how do you measure impact? So uh, thank you for focusing on MSMEs. Um, and now uh, we look forward to- uh, Welcome Mr. Walid Samara, who is the technical advisor for the GIZ for IFIN in Jordan and is going to speak about a case study of the methodology or the innovative methodology of financial integration in Jordan. Hello everyone, I'm so happy and pleased to be here with all of you as we have heard Mr. Ulrich has spoken about some of the 
case studies and has uh, spoken about the work of the GIZ in Jordan or Arab countries and I'm going to speak about IFIN in Jordan about the innovative methodology of uh, the integration and the SMEs can we please turn to the second slide please Generally speaking, uh, Mr. Ulrich has spoken at the very beginning about our methodology and what's uh, very uh, and the advantage is that it's fully integrated and wholesome, whether it has to do with the supply, demand, and all aspects. So to know why we are focusing on all of these aspects or pillars, it is very important to know the objectives and motives. And these motives, uh, we need to know what the challenges are are and what the obstacles are before the uh, MSMEs. Yes, would I have the second slide, please? Thank you. If we look generally at the obstacles or the challenges before the MSMEs in Jordan, they are actually, I think they are the same globally, uh, all the different countries around the world, uh, but the volume of the challenges is, is higher. For example, I will just wait for the editing uh, to happen as we can see on the screen yes so can we go back to yes thank you I need the slide uh, if for example we speak about the financing uh, for the MSMEs in Jordan from the banking se sector it is very low specifically if we're going to compare with the Arab world or the world it's not more than 15% although the average in the Arab world in general is more than 30% and also uh, if we look at women in leadership in Jordan it is actually low a low number when you compare this number to the world of course if we speak about women in the society it is almost half and this translates into another problem which is the contribution of women in the workforce which is not more than 14 percent and of course it is 30 and 40 in different countries around the world and if we speak about financing and the guarantees or collaterals as some of the conditions that are set for the MSMEs to attain a financing we can see that Jordan uh, uh, the percentage and the value of guarantee is very very high and I can also add an indicator that we do not have on the slide however I would like to speak about it is the financing gap is around 75 percent meaning that the financing uh, or the financing that reaches the companies is less by 70 percent that's what's needed so if you speak about the challenges that are major obstacles before the MSMEs and the growth of the MSMEs we uh, want to make sure that when it comes to reform and programs and legislation or products it is not going to be integrated and wholesome unless we look at all of the different perspectives and that is why uh, through our program that we are working on in Jordan we have four pillars of intervention in the next slide yes thank you and as I mentioned through this program we're going to focus on four different pillars because reform is not going to be uh, unilateral so first of all uh, it will have to do with enhancing the uh, regulation framework and control framework and it has to be innovative when I say that that we need to focus on the innovative tools for financing and when you talk about financial inclusion it is not just one perspective not just one pillar we, we're 
uh, we're talking about usage, we're talking about quality, quality control, and the tools that we have now, even if we enhance our legislation and so on, we are going to see growth, however, it's going to be restricted. But at the same time, if we look about, at the innovative tools and mechanisms, and I'm going to give some examples at the end of my slides uh, on how to increase the percentage of usage and to increase the quality of the services. And the first pillar also is how we work with the central bank in Jordan and how we are in negotiations so we have a, a action plan. First of all, I want to speak about the stra strategy of the financial inclusion uh, or the financial integration and the GIZ has worked with us and has been a great success and actually it has a great success in 2017 from 29% to 51% in 2020. And we look at two perspectives. One is use, usage and quality, which are major pillars. And of course, through these two, we're going to focus on the tools and mechanisms that could be provided for the MSMEs. The central bank, uh, about a year ago, was working uh, on a framework uh, for the financial uh, institutions as to expand the services in Jordan and of course this legislative framework was very important and for the legislation and uh, control framework uh, to be implemented it had to be along with the central bank and these legislations and systems and the uh, control framework has to be motivating has to be pushing forward uh, for the uh, MSMEs and of course it needs to reach financial stability, integrity and to protect customers. We speak about innovations, we speak about services, but we all know that one of the major uh, challenges is uh, the control framework or the control strategy is not very clear and transparent. At the end of the day, whether it is the Central Bank in Jordan or anywhere else, it is the entity or the institution that is considered to be a leader in this field. And one of the most important aspects is to find an integrated methodology for the innovation in financing, whether it is direct, indirect, through different policies or through different procedures. And at the same time, to push innovation forward when it comes to different decisions uh, in the financing sectors, it is a little bit difficult for the legislation to be integrated uh, in this whole system and that's why we need the strategies or the transformational strategies that are agile, that have agility, very high agility uh, to motivate the system. For example, in the future, we can have a control framework uh, in different phases, and through the different phases, we set the requirements, we start small, and then we have uh, more requirements, and this is the way we can have it through five, six years and a uh, time ahead. So these are some of the most important uh, points we're focusing on. And uh, of course, uh, the third is uh, the uh, financial providers or financial service providers, um, whether they are new companies, new entities, or old entities. And we are focusing in enhancing their services and how to provide innovative services. And these innovative financial services is to enhance uh, the accessibility of the MS, uh, MSMEs. We said that there, there is a 70% gap of the accessibility to finance of the MSMEs. So we need to have new methodologies and we need to 
provide new services because when I say innovation, I'm not just saying innovation of the service or the product. It could be uh, the, the procedures themselves, the uh, evaluation that is being done, for instance, how we collect data about the MSMEs. So one of the most important uh, points is that we work with different financial institutions to know what are the services that we can provide in the market. So that we can help them through these grants, This, uh, especially when we start the fintech and everything. Why, let's say, why? how can we be sure that they have uh, the uh, capital? So these grants will be something like a push for them to encourage them to get uh, these services. The third topic is very important that uh, gives you the main uh, service. We need to enhance the capabilities of the MSMEs. So, because when we do that and when we serve the regulatory framework and give them diversified services, at the same time, we need to work on enhancing their capabilities so as to be capable of using these strategies. And also, at the same time, they can be ready to finalize uh, these activities. We are very aware of uh, these challenges and the most important of which is uh, the financial capacities. This is the greatest challenge in their face. So from this topic, we will focus on building capacities and also the knowledge, the financial knowledge that uh, tells them how to use these new tools. On the fourth, uh, access, as we saw in the other slide, is the women's participation in the whole uh, society. It is very low, so we need to enhance it to give them some products that are women friendly so that uh, they can have uh, their own MSMEs and work uh, forth. So we need to give them and to work uh, through the central bank and give them a specific plan and also cooperate with the providers of the financial services to give them more incentives. And also there should be some training courses and awareness campaigns that would target women who are owners of such projects or other sectors and services. So from all these four pillars, I've this reminds you of the slide that Ole has uh, spoken about at the very beginning, because this reform and programs can be can very difficult, can be very difficult to uh, be done apart from legislation. That is why we have focused on these intervention areas so that we can do something and achieve some progress with the MSMEs, and this will uh, help definitely their growth and make them capable of giving job opportunities, which is the greatest challenge in Jordan and the whole region. Next slide, please. We have uh, covered uh, innovation. At the beginning, I'll give some examples. So as to explain how we make the best use of innovations whether in the bank office or the front uh, back office or front office, so that this will support uh, financial inclusion for MSMEs, especially the use of them. For example, one of the innovations we think about is through digital banks. These digital banks should give services to the MSMEs. For example, in Jordan, in Jordan, we have two more than 200 of these facilities and they give their grants to the youth and of course, which is very important. And we are trying to cooperate with them because they provide these services, which will greatly help. We all know that technology today saves you uh, some cost, uh, operational cost. And we're sure now that there are banks that have been successful, and some countries have had very good stories to tell, especially in Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, and many 
in East Asia. Alternatives are very important as well, especially today in Jordan with the new legislation, which is financial institutions, because this will regulate the collective financing and the crowdfunding and also the leasing. These two tools will help a lot. Well, the crowdfunding has many models and many tools and uh, mechanisms. Let me talk about the lending basic. Simply, you have a platform and this platform, of course, uh, is electronic. The main idea in it is that it helps the MSMEs, uh, the asking for finance, to showcase their need for financing and to tell them how they would be able to uh, pay their dues. The main important idea is, for example, I need 5,000 uh, dinars, which are $7,000. For example, I'll go to a bank or an institution and they might tell me oh, it's very difficult to give you this sum of money. But if it is done through this crowd uh, financing platforms, this will be an important and an excellent investment opportunity. Through these 7,000 USD, I can support 1,000, 2,000, and this support will eventually look like loans or investment according to the approach of this crowd finance platform. So to employ this in the best way, we will increase MSME's opportunity for finance because one of the main reasons why they cannot be successful is that they don't get finance and that they uh, their uh, financial uh, Feasibility is not always uh, guaranteed, but crown financing will help this because it uh, distributes risks. It can be through, as I said before, uh, specialized platforms, and these platforms can be launched by many, and it is very successful in Europe and uh, America. Some of them have uh, just uh, uh, launched cooperation with some specialized institutions and also electronic uh, uh, wallets are very important now and very active. And this helps them uh, manage their own sums and wealth. Many services also are there uh, like alternative classification for MSMEs who don't have a credit history. So how can we depend on anything to guarantee that they will uh, reimburse their loans? So this alternative classification can give them the transaction that they do through wallets or through social media or maybe some analyses uh, or uh, some relationships. So this is what we call it. This is why we call it alternatives. Through this slide, in fact, I wanted to show you these three examples because this is innovation. What would innovation look like and how they would help as well? I really do hope that I could tell you and show you how we follow this approach that is very diversified. And at the same time, we really are sure that innovations can help. Thank you very much, Walid, for this very detailed presentation and the different means that uh, can help you, God willing, to reach the goals that you need. Until we finish the presentation, we wish to ask you to answer this the next question, which is, Jordan is a success story in financial inclusion. Please explain why do we still have this gap of 
and we have uh, many other questions that might arise by the end of uh, the session. Thank you very much again. And I would like to, uh, uh, now I give the floor to Mr. Zaid al husban from POS Rocket, POS Rocket. And he is the establisher of the, of the founder. He will give an example of a success story of one of these MSMEs and also how it was successful and the development of the very successful partnerships as well. Mr. Zaid, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Saha. And thank you very much for having me. I might introduce myself. I'm Ziad Husban, founder of PS Rocket, and previously I had iFood uh, for uh, online catering. My company it gives uh, selling points on the cloud for restaurants. This is how we look like. This is our uh, system. We are in Jordan, Egypt, and Kuwait, and uh, we have uh, uh, our company is uh, has been part of Codex, which is a Saudi uh, company in the Saudi uh, in Saudi Arabia and the Emirates. We wished to play big. That's why we joined uh, many other uh, Arab uh, companies. Well, we have attracted more than $7 million investment through the five years that we have been working on. Second slide. The problem that we need to solve today, which is the selling points. It's very old and it is very limited. Next slide. We have to look upon the future. This is the cloud system where owners of restaurants and also business, very small businesses for food helps them to arrange and manage uh, their work remotely. The other important thing also is it, it achieves a linkage with the many other entities like financial entities and the like, so they can exchange services. And thus they can enlarge their work through the system. I have here introduced ourselves. And so the idea here is that the owner of a restaurant, for example, has a dashboard on his own mobile. He has the business overview so he can follow his storage and also the reports that he receives so as to be to make decisions and smart decisions to enlarge his own business. And through these uh, decisions, we write down reports and we deliver them to the owner of the business. When we look at the FinTech and how PS Rocket, POS Rocket works with this, we target small to micro businesses. The system covers everyone, that's why it's not costly. And there is a finance tool, of course, and the software is a subscription. What we do now is that we have the APIs that we work together with microfinance, we work with businesses and also uh, micro and small businesses. We give them access so that they can have a full history. And through this history, they can uh, have uh, a financing for this in due course. So he can be sure how to support them. We have digital wallets and it doesn't require any hard work. 
he can uh, withdraw or add cash, provide cash. Another important thing is that uh, they can know the customer behavior and all the behavior of uh, the customers. So for example, this customer buys from our restaurant all the time. So we can analyze this behavior and write down reports and give them to the restaurant owner. The system is online and offline as well. So you have to have internet, but still without internet, you can still have access. And we upload all this information on servers so as to be able to uh, access, to have access from everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. The USAID has supported us. And of course uh, the bid and we, and we won, won this bid because we could provide, provide them with evidence that we are an integral part of these systems because they are, we are one of the small to medium businesses. We could help them and increase their sales. That's why we have earned their confidence and also we have gained more money just as they did. This is the last slide. We have the business here, and we have the merchants that we focus on, and we have the, the customers, of course, the businesses and the customers. The most important thing is that uh, POS rocket should be in the middle. So through us, all these are networked or linked together so as to enlarge the businesses for the merchants. For example, today we have the owner of the restaurant who might uh, have a network with the orders and he can receive them directly from Talabat or Kareem. So this uh, automatically increases their sales through this linkage. This is uh, just one example, but we have several uh, examples because we have more than 58 businesses and this is the platform that we can work together we then open a new world to all the owners of uh, restaurants and stores to expand and to cut on costs and thank you very much thank you very much Zaid well, in fact, uh, this uh, really is heartwarming. And now we can start to ask you, after all these success stories and all this uh, development in such a short time, we need to ask you, of course, by the end of the session, what's next? What do you uh, have in mind to do in the future? Because uh, this, uh, we have made sure that all uh, the uh, Qualifications are very uh, clear and that you have them. I wish to give you some time to think how to answer this question by the end of the session and how to make the best use of these experiences in our own. Uh... Thank you very much, Deed. And now if you would allow me to introduce Mr. Hisham Haru from Morocco and Tawfiq is the second biggest company with a number of clients in Morocco but I think by now it has become the first and the value of its financial wallet in Morocco so we're going to hear from El Tawfiq how they developed the company and how they expanded their financial services and specifically when it comes to the uh, micro enterprises. When we say MSMEs, but they have actually um, a VSE, which is very small business. Mr. Hisham is the CEO of El Tawfiq company thank you so much uh, for having me i'm very pleased and thank you for all of the organizers for this great initiative 
and for all the participants too. I'm going to speak about Tawfiq and as I said that it is affiliated to one of the banks in Morocco and it helps different enterprises um, in Morocco um, and it is one of the main companies um, in the strategy of financial integration in our country. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide, please. As I said, um, we have different scopes uh, in financing. Uh, we have four pillars, which is the uh, economic integration uh, for uh, women uh, or for the more vulnerable sector in the society and also to update uh, the different um, entities of the smaller clients or smaller enterprises and also to facilitate uh, their turn from the informal to the formal sector and to integrate their uh, finances into the banking sector. Next slide, please. So, um, we work in different uh, points, in different perspectives. Uh, we have the loans, uh, very small loans from uh, 3,000 to 150 dirhams, and also to merge and integrate specific sectors of the society to open bank accounts for them and also for the money transfers we provide these services and also insurance so we play a very important role in insurance and also in uh, providing educational and training services specifically when it comes to marketing um, Mr. Hisham, um, can I please ask you to click on the Arabic language channel on the platform in front of you for the interpretation? Would you please do that, sir? Okay, is everything okay? It's not active on my side. Okay. Okay, continue, sir. I'm very sorry. A tawfiq, right now we have 2,150 users or clients, and we have reached 260 million US dollars in financing. We have 500 selling points and 30 mobile points. We have 300,000 active clients and we are number two in Morocco in the number of clients. And we have uh, our risk quality of 5.29%. Um, and this is when it comes to our wallet the risk uh, is 30 day a 30 day risk and as i said it is 5.29 percent and of course before the pandemic uh, it was a little bit Next. different and we had to change many of our numbers. Next slide, Next slide please. Uh, generally speaking, um, when it comes to the small enterprises, we have 
we have different percentages, 64 uh, for the very small ones, 28 for the small and medium, and 7 for the uh, larger size of enterprises. Next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, the clients that we have, they are three categories. Uh, first of all, the informal sector, or those companies that are not formally registered, and they do not have their proper licensing and so on, whether it has to do with the rental or their leases. And we have the very small enterprises. As I mentioned, we have very small enterprises um, as our clients in Morocco and our company. And we have the small enterprises and they're fully, uh, they're formal companies, fully registered. When it comes to the products, we have different products for the MSMEs. A a according to the different type of clients. And uh, the program uh, that we have is to keep up with the market and the global changes uh, for and to support the MSMEs. And we started at the end of 2015. Uh, we have initiated this program and because we want to keep up with the needs of our new clients. And uh, we also needed work on the legislation at that time. We had major challenges uh, like human resources, for example, in 2015. We did not have uh, much information about the MSMEs, uh, and we had to train and enhance our human resources through different programs and different training programs specifically for this new vision and that's why we had mechanisms also scoring mechanisms so we can keep up with the market and with the SMEs. Uh, as I said, it started in 2015 and we have expanded gradually uh, till 2019 and the legislator um, has issued uh, uh, new laws in 2019. Uh, these laws, or this law, instead of having a maximum of $5,000 or 50,000 dirhams, there are three different categories. We have the first one, as I said, 50,000 dirhams. But we have two more categories, 100,000 dirhams in Morocco. That has to do with the contribution, for example, uh, with buying an office or a place and so on. And 150,000 dirhams, which are for the small enterprises. And this is the maximum for the third category. Next slide, please. And we also had to review our offers so it could provide better services for the MSMEs and also the new legislation that I spoke about. Since we've had this legislation by that time, we needed to provide specific products for the usage and for the investment. And it's very important to say that the legislator at the same time 
open the doors for guarantees and collaterals of the central fund for guarantees and collaterals in Morocco uh, and especially the loans that are given to women in that field next slide please Currently, uh, through our experience, we were able to um, exist in all of the different districts and governorates in Morocco and we have around 287 selling point and we are hoping to have more experts on uh, enterprises and companies and small enterprises and to have partners also uh, where we can uh, also provide better services through these selling points right now we are uh, providing very good products next slide it was very important also uh, that we want to enhance the skills of our clients and those who work in the MSMEs. So we had to attain the educational courses and digital courses. As you can see. Next slide, please. We also um, developed an application, a mobile phone application. And uh, there are different topics on this uh, application, and you can find it uh, in the French language and in the Moroccan dialect. Um, and it is available for everyone to download uh, to provide the services through it. Also, next slide, please. We have our website or platform, and we call it Foros, which means opportunities. Uh, we use this platform as a marketplace for our clients to use it for their products and to market their products. And uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. And we are hoping to have our vision that we call TRIP 2025. TRIP um, stands for Trust, Risk, Innovation, Performance. TRIP 2025. Uh, trust, because trust is very important with our clients, of course. Risk is that we need to know what are the risks that stand before us and to be able to identify the risks and deal with them. And innovation. And innovation is to create the appropriate environment uh, for innovation and to encourage innovation and to encourage the different teams that work with us. Performance. Uh, performance is to keep a high level of performance and success at work. And trip, we consider it a trip, a journey to our vision and we hope that we can attain and we can actually reach our objectives. Next slide, please. These are some of the indicators that we use, uh, some we have used and some uh, as a forecast for the future since 2017 up until 2021. Um, there was growth, but it was not exponential. It was gradual, as we can see. As you can see, we have the growth on the chart, and we had new clients, and we want to have a, a higher number of new clients, those who had loans, who, those who have, uh, and as you can see, we've had more than 50% that come 
uh, from the individual loans more than 50 percent so our vision for the future is to have uh, 50 percent more clients each and every year up until as you can see uh, 2022 20, 2025 20, to have 62,000 and a half. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, and we wish you the best with your uh, aims and dreams. And I think we have to host you every year so we can see your success each and every year. Thank you so much. Thank you. We are hoping to have more clients and new clients in the future. Thank you so much. And I want to ask about the additional services and the innovations when it comes to uh, customer service. And uh, I noticed that 72% uh, more of those who attain the, uh, the services were women, uh, which is amazing, of course. I noticed that. Um, so I would like to thank you so much for your presentation. And now we're going to open the floor for some of the questions from the participants. And if you would allow me, I would like to go back with my very first question to Mr. Uderick. And if you can give us his vision or an idea about the IFIN in Jordan, and how that they will be able to assess or evaluate the effects uh, that could happen when it comes to the four different steps or phases. Would you uh, please speak about that, Mr. Ulrich? The four phases of IFIN. You're uh, muted. Yeah. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Did you hear my question? Um, no because I, I only heard the Arabic version, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, then my quick question in English is, uh, how do you plan to uh, measure the impact you will achieve in three years of this program uh, based on all the interventions, the four holistic interventions uh, that you have uh, presented along with Walid um, in, in a minute or so, please, thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much for the, for the question. We, we, well, we, we basically plan to monitor and evaluate um, the impact of, of uh, MSME financial inclusion um, in two ways, basically. First of all, we will do some tracking of the actual, of the MSMEs, those that we sort of target um, um, for with our measures, both on the demand side as well as on the supply side. So we will track and monitor those MSMEs that have benefited from, from capacity building measures and, and um, have used innovative financial services that perhaps have been um, supported by the project. So we will literally go and ask these uh, MSMEs uh, what their status is uh, in the beginning. So a sort of baseline study. Um, um, when they start um, um, benefiting from these measures. And then uh, after three years, uh, two or three years, we will have an end line survey where we uh, ask them again what their status is in terms of jobs, in terms of that they have created or not, um, in terms of growth of the business, um, we will also ask them how they have used these financial services, um, whether they have used them for growth or not. Um, at the same time, we will, uh, with the CBJ, um, develop a, uh, a financial inclusion index for MSMEs. Um, um, that we will, of course, um, um, now, uh, this year, we are going into the market or into the, we will uh, survey uh, MSMEs now to find out uh, what, uh, how they fare in, in terms of this financial inclusion index for MSMEs. We will do the same, hopefully, in three years. So um, that 
in turn we will uh, again uh, correlate or 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 um, correspond with uh, with the uh, related um, growth and job numbers of these very same MSMEs. So well, that's how we want to measure impact. Excellent, thank you. Um, and this is what we want to know because the uh, data uh, for MSME has been a challenge um, uh, for yes. everybody globally, for all organizations. So to have a registry or an index would be really an innovative uh, approach to actually measuring the impact you have uh, achieved in those three years and to learn lessons of what could be done uh, differently in the next uh, program. We would like yeah. to have you in Jordan longer. Um, so thank you again, uh, Ule. I would like to go to um, Walid and please help us understand um, how come Jordan is, is uh, promoted as a, such a success story in, in increasing financial inclusion in, in broad numbers, but yet we have such a gap uh, in the MSME um, uh, sector. Oh, sorry, I said all in English, inshallah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. She said I'm very sorry, I kept on speaking English, so please. Thank you very much, Sahar, and thanks also to Abdullah, who has been asking about this from the chat box. Let me just make it clear, please. At the outset, before I answer the question, maybe I spoke about the percentage, 70%. Well, this is uh, derived from the link I gave uh, on the uh, chat. At the same time, I need to confirm the number in the whole world. It is uh, approximately 55% in the Arab region. In the region, it is 80%, 85%. Well, we might be less than Latin America, where it is spiraling. When uh, we speak about the national strategy of financial inclusion, I don't know if I can share my screen just to show something very important. Just give me a second, please. You have one minute, she says. When uh, this is the strategy, and all national strategies in the whole world must have national targets. Ours was from 2018 to 2020, and it has focused on uh, the percentage of financial inclusion for persons more than MSMEs. So the acquisition was 33, and it was raised to 55. And as Ole uh, explained, it's not just a matter of assets, but it is also how to use these assets. The second point was the gender gap. Well, they haven't focused on gender gap. And also, let me talk about the governance structure. So services that have been focused on in the strategy are the person, the individuals, not the MSMEs, as I said before. In the new strategy, these uh, targets will change, of course, and they will focus more on institutions and enterprises. But the strategy has actually increased the, the annual number of MSMEs, especially in um, uh, microfinance, 20% via banks. But this doesn't mean that if we focus on the MSMEs in the new strategy, we will find a final solution to this problem. No, as we said before, that it's a matter of a huge gap in Jordan and in the whole world, and it requires a reform from every angle. Financial inclusion will be successful, especially uh, uh, focusing uh, this time on innovations. I hope I answered the question. So you have answered the question, but uh, you might uh, open the door for more questions. So you have focused on the contribution in uh, financial inclusion and focus, more focus on MSMEs. And this is very important, in fact, Walid. And I'm sure it will leave a positive impact on economy, on 
uh, employment uh, jobs and job opportunities and the like. I wish to ask Zaid if uh, you can take part with Zaid and tell us uh, what's your outlook to the future. You have given us some very good examples and the achievements that you had in a very short period. We need to know your future plans. Zaid, you have the floor. Hello, yes, Zaid. I was asking, after the explanation that you've given us on the US rocket, POS rocket and also your achievements that you could do in a very short period. What are your future steps and plans? Can you hear me? He says, sorry, I have the problems with my voice or with the connection. We lost you. We lost you, Zaid. Okay, let's go to Mr. Hisham from Tawfiq. Hisham, there's been a, a query, if you can hear me, please. On the risk percentage in the portfolio, which is uh, you found as high, what are your strategies? with the, the expected growth uh, to be managed in a better way for the contractor and also for at well, uh, well, uh, Uh, approximately a hundred uh, with the lockdown pandemic. and all yani, this pandemic clients the clients the msme clients have, su have uh, suffered from these lockdown problems because uh, this is their daily income and without it, uh, they can't have any in some of the regions uh, that have been living on the revenues of uh, tourism, for example, they had nothing. So they have been badly affected. Anybody who has a relationship with the MSMEs, you will find that he is less than 5%. thought that the situation is very hard and difficult and it will continue to be so. In March and April, it started to open a little. This year is still difficult, and I really do hope that next year will be back to normal. And hopefully, we have good news. Well, she says these. Uh, Financial services uh, always need uh, revisions and setting the uh, strategies and everything. And uh, al always we aspire to reach uh, more numbers of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, owners of MSMEs. By the end of this meeting, I'd like to thank all participants for their very useful interventions. And I would like to thank very much the speakers Mr. Ulrich uh, from GIZ, Mr. Zaid Hosban from uh, POS Rocket, Mr. Walid Samara from GIZ, and Mr. Hisham Harro from Attawfiq uh, Morocco. And finally, I'd like also to thank you all. And I wish to give you that, uh, of course, you know well that uh, more than a year ago, and focusing on the MSMEs, and 
International MSME Day has been set, which is 27th of June. So please celebrate that day with your clients and with your families. It is a global day now, and it focuses on the MSMEs, By the end of this meeting, I would reiterate my thanks to everybody, to Eddie Saman, who has helped us with the session. Thank you very much to all. Thank you very much, Sahar. So, Meda Baden, what's next? What's the way forward? We will uh, wait for one, please take one minute to finalize the questionnaire that you have on screen now. We will be sending you an email on this portal. And for more resources on financial inclusion, please visit this link. Thank you very much. <laughs>